It's been a busy few days. I'm out here in Santa Monica, which is where I prefer to stay during Nam, which is actually about an hour and a half that way in Anaheim. I didn't do any filming there this year. The noise pollution is so severe, it's pretty impossible to make anything that's intelligible. I guess there's a couple of things I looked at that were interesting. Uh, the new Korg ARP is a thing of just sheer and utter beauty. There's also this thing called Lyra, which a friend of mine, BT, well, a friend of ours, recommended, and that sounded amazing. And I've also got a couple of other bits that are linked down below. There's this guy who's putting chips on things so everyone can code amazing stuff. And I think it looks like a really good idea and something I'll probably get my hands on. And that could be another little journey that we can go on. I've also been finishing off the next season of a sitcom called Home, which is an absolutely fabulous uh, series to be working on, not only because the show is great, but because the people who make it are such a wonderful bunch of people. It feels like, you know, you're part of a, a family. So that's been great. And indeed, my last cue needed a bit of live cello. So as we speak, as, as I'm making this film, there's a cellist in London doing this last cue. And I'll get sent all sorts of options to finish on my portable rig. So I thought, as these things are an evolutionary process, that I take you through what my current lineup of equipment for my portable rig is, get some feedback from you, possibly some advice, but also to look at, I think, a really fine piece of equipment. Right, just waiting for this Wii transfer to download from Air Adele Studios in London, and they've given me extensive notes, and just by reading the notes, I'm like, can't wait. An amazing cellist called Ren Ford, who is, uh, he's worked with my brother Keaton quite a lot, and my brother Joe did a lot of work on Assassin's Creed, stuff like that, he's absolutely sensational. I've linked some stuff in the video description down below so you can check them out for yourself. Right, so quick rig rundown. For me, the rules of a portable rig are lowest piece count as humanly possible, ease of use, reliability, and robustness. Ability to replace, I think, is really important. So, starting with the MacBook Pro, I had a, was it a 2018? And I had all sorts of problems with the keyboard and with the USB-C ports which is obviously like really risky having things unmount when you've got uh, drives you know the possibility of corruption that kind of stuff so I replaced that with this one and it's been brilliant it really all but scrubs 4k but I mean it really handles everything I haven't managed to kind of make it run out of juice whatsoever so I've got that I've upgraded my hyperdrive to this new one here which what I like about it is it has a dedicated attached USB-C unlike my other hyperdrive it doesn't take up two USB-C ports it takes up the one and is also clear for the headphone jack as well so this is a much much better solution micro SD SD you've got a funny kind of ethernet thing, you've got a, another USB-C. My thing with hubs is they've got to give you back what they take. So it's, it's taken a USB-C, gives us it back there, standard USB there, and then we have uh, HDMI and Thunderbolt. I'm just using this inner tech thing here. What I like about this is you can get the, these anywhere. They're about $30, $40, and, or indeed, I know it's not the correct thing to do, but uh, you can get them delivered pretty much same day to major cities from Amazon. So easily replaceable, as are the Lees, just standard old school USBs. And I'm just using two SSDs, and they're four terabytes each. They're annoyingly labeled the same, but I know that these are all of the Spitfire samples, and these are all of my EXS samples. And also I keep the project files and the movies on them. And between them, there doesn't seem to be any kind of bottleneck. Lovely bottle of wine gifted to me from Trevor Morris. Thanks for that, mate. Can't wait to get into that, yo-yo. And the big shock of the day is I've been spending an awful lot of money on expensive headphones. And I just think they're, there's something about them that just don't have the robustness I, I require. And I know many of you use these to, to travel. When you're traveling the amount I do, it's insane how often I have to replace them, something blows or you know the lead goes dodgy and all that kind of stuff. And I do really enjoy wearing those, um, but it's just the wear and tear it gets. It's just, it's proven to be at too much of an expense. Also, they're not the greatest kind of compact things because I like to get everything into my, my briefcase. So I basically learned to mix on these. And they're not the noise cancelling ones, they're, they're just the, the normal ones. Uh, noise cancelling ones are brilliant, but they're the, the Buzz Lightyear of, of this year, um, sold out. 
and I do have a really disgraceful wall of shame here for you to look at. These keep me sane because this is what I listen to my podcasts on, but they also, I do the Labrador a lot on planes and if one ear will fall out and then uh, you have to find a replacement. So anyway, the star of the show though, and it really is the star of the show, I have to say, is the Native Instruments Complete. It's the M32, I believe. It's just a great size. The action works really well. But there are a couple of things, which I think I've mentioned before, which uh, make this thing brilliant. First of all, you can just fit any old sustain pedal uh, to a standard jack at the back here, and it doesn't have a breakout cable. So you just plug your sustain pedal straight in, and if you're a sustain slag like I am, then that's brilliant. But the real clincher for me are these two faders here, which can be reassigned to expression and dynamic. So I don't have to bring my pallet gear, and I don't take up yet another port with a lead for that. So all fantastic. I make a rule of never using these like transport bars and stuff. I think if you develop a muscle memory for a piece of kit that you don't use all the time, it becomes very awkward when you switch back. So I just use the trackpad for transport controls. Now, the one issue I do have currently is that complete control doesn't have the functionality of reassigning MIDI controllers and their behavior, but I believe that's in beta format at the moment and is coming soon. So let's just get up a contact in instrument and I'm going to do my new current favorite so let's do Albion Neo I'm going to take the Divisi band A and I believe the Saltasta has a really kind of obvious very beautiful dynamic range and then what I do is I just go MIDI effects and I go modifier pitch bend not up and down just the whole pitch bend and so this is and then this expression so you've got your dynamics as you'd expect on the modulation fader and you've got your expression on the pitch bend fader. Now what you will notice is as I go like this, uh, they behave very differently because the standard setting is 200% here. So we want it to go to 100%. So there is a trade-off here, and this was the feature request I was gonna make to Native Instruments. So it behaves exactly the same there. But the problem is when you let go, it springs back. So if there's any possibility, not only of being able to reassign the pitch bend wheel, but also to adjust its behavior so it doesn't, it basically takes the, the spring out. It's it's really weird, the, the, the terms are kind of opposite for what I use them for. So expression I use to balance the instrument against the rest of the band and dynamics is what I use to as expression, as in kind of an in, in emotional sense. So let's just have a listen to that. I run the picture inside logic. I don't have Pro Tools on this Mac, but that's something I'm looking into because the rest of the season I did using a combination of Pro Tools and logic that I uh, talked about on the video linked above. And it's been just really quite awkward. It's, I mean, it's always awkward to find a new environment and you know, slightly kind of compressed keyboard and these weird faders and all this kind of stuff. So the added uh, difficulty of using uh, video in logic and it's kind of slightly clumsy, hacky, thing has been uh, annoying, but also annoying for the dub who are having to take individual BWAVs as opposed to just importing tracks from Pro Tools. Other thing which is a real kind of quality of life thing is I always, whenever I travel, I always take my power block because sometimes you'll come to a hotel and there'll be just one plug. Uh, but I also have these international converters with the extra USB on top, which are also fantastic. Right, cellos downloaded. Yes, they are. Time to lock and load and mix my last episode of this season of home. So the ever shortening list of stuff that I take on the road with me is linked down below. I'm not sponsored by any of these manufacturers, but credit where credit's due. I think Native Instruments, I don't know what I really like about this, this portable keyboard is it feels like they've really thought about it. And if you do plan on being a media troubadour like myself, I would humbly recommend it. Thanks as always for watching. I've got a bunch of new videos coming away soon, including a what I, what I hope to be a fantastic piano book. Do subscribe if you haven't done already, ding that bell if you want to be notified the next time I put a film up. And one of those, always much appreciated. I do hope the sun comes out at some point.